then comes along the genius detective. Me. Yes, you. Hercules Poirot. Yep, cute. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 Agatha Christie adaptations. He's not moving. Just plain drunk. Just plain dead. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at the best film and television adaptations of Christie's novels, short stories, and plays. Let us know in the comments what your favourite Agatha Christie murder mystery is. Number 10. Murder on the Orient Express, 2017 but you know there's something about a tangle of strangers pressed together for days on end with nothing in common but the need to go from one place to another, then never to see each other again. It's the first in what's since become a new series of Poirot films starring and directed by Kenneth Branagh. Murder on the Orient Express remains one of Christie's most well-known novels, though of course she is the best-selling novelist of all time, so they're all quite famous. You know, with your books and your capers, you are missing out on romance. Romance never goes unpunished. This version is very indulgent, however, focusing more on Poirot himself than on the many suspects in the murder of Edward Ratchet. This earned it some criticism, especially compared to other adaptations, but it remains a visually stunning film, well worth a watch. So you say no to my dirty money? I say no to you, Mr. Ratchet. Business with the gun, right? Is that what it was? It is far more personal than that. The 2022 follow-up, Death on the Nile, was just as gorgeous, if a little more meandering. Number 9. Agatha Christie's Marple For years, ITV had all the television rights for Agatha Christie's work, which led to them adapting just about every Miss Marple story into feature-length television films, during the 2000s. If a murderer gets a formula that works, then won't stop. They go on with it. But it does lose points for playing fast and loose with the original stories. ITV chopped and changed all sorts of things, and then eventually decided it would start sticking Miss Marple into stories that aren't even about her. Well, you'll have to know. Everyone will have to know. Poor Major Palgrave died in the night. Oh, dear. Oh, I am sorry. Most notable was the Marple version of Why Didn't They Ask Evans, which overhauled the entire plot to fit her in. My dear, are you quite all right? Yes, I thought... Uh, it's nothing, I thought I, I saw something. Still, Miss Marple herself, played by both Gwendolyn McEwen and Julia McKenzie, is such a good character that we don't really mind. Number 8. Witness for the Prosecution, 1957. Thirty-seven years has it been all that long. Yes, sir. This is 1952. That was in October 1915. The Shepherd's Bush murder. Uh, the chemist accused of putting cyanide in his uncle's toothpaste. As well as her more accessible novels and short stories, Christie also wrote plenty of plays. One of these, The Mousetrap, is the longest-running play in the entire world. But the 1953 play, Witness for the Prosecution, was soon made into a film complex legal drama where the obvious suspect in a tragic murder, Leonard Vole, needs to be defended. It's the case of Mrs. Emily French, you've probably seen the reports in the press. This was one of Christie's own favourite stories, and it was a smash hit. Critically and commercially successful, Witness for the Prosecution went on to get nominated for six Academy Awards, winning a Golden Globe. If you want to know the twist ending, you'll have to watch it for yourself. Splendid. It's all the instincts of a skilled criminal. Thank you, sir. Number seven, Evil Under the Sun, 1982. You come out here, and as near as damn it, accuse me. Horace Blatt, a fraud. Peter Ustinov played Poirot many times, and he'll be seen on our list again. But to start, we have Evil Under the Sun, which takes place primarily at a picturesque resort in the Adriatic Sea, though the murder happens back in England. Wawu is invited to the island to investigate a seemingly unrelated incident around a counterfeit diamond, only for the woman responsible for the diamond fraud to be violently murdered under mysterious circumstances. There'll be cocktails tonight at 8 o'clock. Do have a good, long, peaceful rest, Arlena. 
this version did change some things from the novel so that it could comfortably fit into a feature film without getting too long or confusing, but it remains memorable. I hope you haven't come here to practice your sleuthing games on my guests. They've all got far too many skeletons in their cupboards to join in with enthusiasm. <laughs> Number 6. Murder, She Said, 1961 This time, we have Margaret Rutherford as Miss Marple, in a film adaptation of 450 from Paddington. While travelling by train, Marple sees a murder in action, as a woman on a passing train is strangled, but there's no evidence, not only about who the killer might be, but that a murder happened at all. Tickets, please. A woman has been strangled. I saw it. I beg your pardon? A man strangled a woman in a train. I saw it out there. It's initially up to Marple to prove to the police that a crime was committed, and then she has to solve it. Like Evil Under the Sun, there are changes here, and not only to the title. In the novel, it isn't Marple who witnesses the crime at all, though it does make for a more exciting film opening. Madam, don't you think perhaps you had a little nap and maybe had a bad dream? Young man, I was not dreaming. I saw it. What are you going to do about it? Number 5. Agatha Christie's Prowl The older companion to Agatha Christie's Marple on ITV was Prowl which thankfully stuck to the source material a lot more closely. Hastings. Ah, oh, Hastings, my dear, dear Hastings. Poor old chap. These episodes star David Suchet as Powell, and you'll be relieved to hear that this time, ITV didn't start putting him into other stories he was never supposed to be in. They adapted every single Powell story and short story over a period of nearly 25 years, producing 70 episodes. You're up to something, aren't you? Right. I knew it. Otherwise, why come back to the scene of our first murder? They concluded with a version of Curtain, the final problem story in which he dies, which was published only a year before Christie died herself, though she wrote it in the 1940s, after she'd begun to hate him. Because, mon ami, I fear it will soon be the scene of another. Number four, The Mirror Cracked, 1980. Oh, 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 Miss Marple! Oh, goodness, are you all right? That'll teach me to be dogmatic. More from Miss Marple, in 1980, Angela Lansbury starred as the charming amateur detective in this adaptation of The Mirror Cracked from side to side. A Hollywood film is being shot in Marple's quaint village, St Mary Mead starring two rival actresses. What are you doing here so early, dear? I thought the plastic surgery seminar was in Switzerland. Actually, darling, I couldn't wait to begin our little movie. But an unwitting fan is killed in a crime that was targeting one of the actresses. Or was it? Christy isn't really known for her comedy, but this version has one of the funniest scripts of any Christy adaptation. She just had one drink, and then about five minutes later, she sits down, sort of gasps, and then she's dead, poor thing. Despite being a commercial flop, it's now a timeless classic, well worth watching, and also boasts other megastars in its cast, including Rock Hudson and Elizabeth Taylor. Number three, Death on the Nile, 1978. Oh, Simon, I do love you. You make me so happy. We'll honeymoon in Egypt. Well, we said we'd go to Egypt. A far superior version of Death on the Nile compared to the 2022 outing. This again starred Peter Ustinov as Prowl. Other members of its all-star cast include Angela Lansbury and Maggie Smith. Again, and even Betty Davis. It was even filmed in Egypt too. Unable to rely heavily on CGI Egyptian monuments, like the most recent version. Everywhere we go, she pops up. Darling. Like some kangaroo in heat. Oh, I can't understand her. Can't you? Oh, well, I suppose it's my fault. I broke our engagement and went off with you. The murder victim this time is outrageously wealthy heiress Lynette Ridgway, who was killed during her honeymoon on a riverboat. Poirot happens to be there and starts to uncover the truth, discovering, of course, that everybody has a motive and an alibi. 
for Ridgeway's slaying. Sometimes I want to put this little gun up to her head and very gently pull the trigger. What? Number two, and then there were none, 1945. Many consider this Christie's greatest story, reflected in the fact that it's the single best-selling mystery novel ever written, and it isn't hard to see why. Uh, Dr. Armstrong, we've taken all the evidence except your own. What's your reason for being here? Well, uh, quite frankly, I came here professionally. Not only is the book itself phenomenal, but it boasts more than one massively popular film version. Eight people are brought to an island under mysterious invitation, and one by one the characters are killed off until, as the title says, none remain. I'll summarise our findings. We've all received letters from old, trusted friends inviting us to spend the weekend here as guests of their friends, the Owens. The fact that the increasingly outlandish murders do, in the end, have a logical explanation, make it one of the best stories. Listen, my friends! The accusation is true! Now I remember! The concept is now a staple of the genre. A group of strangers who all turn out to be connected are brought to an isolated place where their lives are threatened. Number 1. Murder on the Orient Express, 1974 What a funny little man. Obviously a frog. This time, we have Albert Finney as Poirot in another version of the popular novel. This version actually opens with information about the famous Armstrong kidnapping that drives the plot, making it feel less contrived than in other adaptations. I want you to take a job on for me. It means big money. Very big money. Poirot is travelling from Istanbul to London on the glamorous Orient Express, but detestable fellow passenger Ratchet is murdered late one night. The clues pull Poirot in a dozen different directions, Everybody had a motive, everybody had an opportunity, and all the key evidence is designed to mislead. Mr. Ratchet has been frontally stabbed 10, 11, 12 times. There's a reason the story is so renowned for its unique twist reveal, and this version is not perfect. <laughs> 